Mid-Module 4, Grade 4, Engage New York, Problem 1. Follow the directions below to draw a figure in the box below. Use a straight edge. So I don't know how to get a straight edge or a protractor on this program, so I'm just going to do the best I can without one. A says to draw two points B and D. So I'm going to draw two points and then B and D means that's what I need to label them. So here is point B and here is point D. You want to make the point big enough so that your teacher can see it, but not so big that it looks like you don't know what a point is. Okay, so that's A. B says draw BD and it has a picture of a line over it. So using a straight edge, you need to connect these two points and put arrows at the end. That's what makes them a line is putting those arrows at the end. So I'm going to cheat and make my points bigger so that now they fit my line. Don't cheat when you take the test. Get a straight edge. Do it correctly. All right, C says draw point C that is in the middle of B, D. So you would measure between B and D to make your new point C. Okay? So now I've done A, B, and C. D says draw point A that is not on B, D. So I could draw point A here, or if I don't like that one, I could draw point A over here, right? Or I could draw point A way down here. You get to choose. It doesn't matter where you draw point A. I could even draw point A above my line, except that I don't have much room up there. So draw point A that is not on B, D. Okay, so I've done that. There's my point A. E says to draw A, B, and it has a picture of a ray above it. So I'm going to use a straight edge, right? If I could, I would use a straight edge. I would start at point A and draw a straight line that passes through B. And then I need the arrow on the end of B. Uh, I think I used the word line, but this is really a ray. So I'm drawing a ray from A straight through B, and I have the arrow on the end of B. And I can see that because right here above the AB, it has this symbol that tells me I'm going to start at a point and then draw with an arrow on the other end. Then F says to draw line segment AC. I know it's a segment because above it, it has just that, which means that it goes from one point to another point and ends. It does not have the little arrow on it. So again, using a straight edge, I would start at point A and go directly to point C and stop. G says to name an obtuse angle, an obtuse obtuse angle. So an obtuse angle is an angle that is greater than 90 degrees. Greater than 90 degrees. So I'm looking at this angle right here. If I could go from here to here to here, it creates this angle which is larger than the corner of a piece of paper. And that's the definition of obtuse, is that it's going to be larger than the corner of a, you know, perfectly square piece of paper. So to name that, I'm going to say that is angle, and then I have to start from either D or A. I'll start from D. I'm going to say it's angle D, C, A. Because once you start with a letter, you have to follow it along its path to go to the angle. The center letter is always going to be the one that is at the vertex of that angle. All right. Then H says to name an acute angle. So an acute angle is going to be less than 90 degrees. So if I look at C angle CBA, that one's pretty close to 90. So I'm not even going to play with it in case I'm wrong. 
But if I look down here at this angle, I am positive that that is an acute angle. It is less than 90 degrees. It is smaller than the corner of a square piece of paper, right? So that's the angle I want to name. So I'm going to name the acute angle. So I write angle, and then I start at a point that is not the vertex. So I'm going to start at C, and I'm going to name it C A B. So angle C A B. And again, double checking that A is at the vertex, which it is. That's the angle I'm talking about. And it is in the center when I name it. Good job.